हेलो स्टूडेंट्स मई सेल्फ डाक्टर द्वारका प्रसाद फैकल्टी फ्रम डिपार्टमेंट आफ फिजिस् बी एम एस इंस्टिट्यूट आफ् टेक्नलॉजी एंड मैनेजमेंट यलाहंक बैंगलूर टूडे ऐल गोयिंग टू डेमास्ट्रेट ए लैब एक्सपेरिमेंट ऑन न्यूटन रिंग्स एक्सपेरिमेंट न्यूटन रिंग्स आर् दि इंटरफरे फिंज पैटर्न फॉर्म बै लाइट इंसिडेंट आन दिन फिलम आफ् एर between a convex lens and a glass plate a flat glass plate or you can choose a suitable uh, two lenses uh, air film between the two lenses that leads to an interference the light waves when they interfere then you get a newton's ring pattern that newton's ring pattern will be like this when you use a sodium vapor lamp that is a monochromatic light source then you will have a concentric bright and dark fringes so yellow color region where you are seeing is the bright region in between the dark region so concentric bright and dark circles you will see these new uh, pattern this pattern is called as newton's rings apparatus required for this experiment to perform or plano convex lens plain glass plate a stand with a turn table uh, and for the glass plate then traveling microscope sodium vapor lamp then magnifying glass to see the uh, readings in the microscope to understand this experiment in a better way the theory behind this it is explained in this particular slide you just see this video it will be more clear to you Here a plano convex lens sits on a glass flap. So we have a thin film of air with varying thickness between the curved surface of the lens and the plane surface of the glass block. Under monochromatic light these circles we see are interference fringes called Newton's rings. Let's see how they arise. Remember the phases of reflections from the previous section. The way of arriving at this surface is in glass, high end, approaching air, low end. So it's reflected with phase change zero. The way of reflected from the next surface, reflected in air at the glass, low end. So it's reflected with phase change zero. The way of reflected from the next surface, reflected in air at the glass interface. has phase change pi very near the point of contact between lens and block the air film is much thinner than a wavelength of light so we have negligible phase difference due to path length we've just seen that one of the waves has a pi phase difference the other zero so the waves are out of phase and cancel which we call appearance the sum of the two reflected waves is small This explains the dark patch in the center. By the way, this might be a good time to revise the chapter on The first dark ring occurs when the thickness t is half a wavelength. The round trip for the second wave is 2t, a whole wavelength, but the reflections give half a cycle or pi radians out of phase. If the film is m lambda on 2 thick where m is an integer the path difference gives m wavelengths the reflections give half a cycle and we have the mth dark ring for bright rings of course the path difference must be m plus a half wavelengths giving half a cycle in path difference to cancel out the pi effect of the reflections depending on the thickness of the film the reflected light can be either a maximum or a minimum due to interference in this example pythagoras' theorem relates the radius of the lens surface to the radii of the dark circles the wavelength and the integer m so hope with this uh, particular uh, small video which is attached with it uh, you can easily make out what is the theory and the principle behind the formation of concentric bright and dark fringes called the newton's rings in this experiment 
we are determining the radius of curvature of a given plane of convex lens so the radius of curvature of a given plane of convex lens by taking the light source of known wavelength here lambda that is wavelength of sodium vapor lamp is taken as 5893 angstrom strictly speaking it has two wavelengths 5890 and 5896 we take the average of these two as the wavelength and m minus n is the uh, difference in the mth and nth fringes and their respective diameter to square difference if you know then with the help of the diameter uh, square uh, for a particular uh, set of fringes and by knowing the wavelength of the sodium vapor lamp you can easily determine the radius of curvature of a given plano convex lens the whole apparatus arrangement is like this so you have a sodium vapor lamp and from the sodium vapor lamp the light what it comes it's made to so sodium vapor lamp is here so from the light uh, from the sodium vapor lamp the light which it comes is made to fall on the uh, inclined glass plate uh, strictly speaking it is uh, to be a uh, 45 degrees so the light falls on this then it partially transmit partially reflect so the reflected light it and it falls on normally on the uh, lens and then glass plate setup and refla refracted light it enters into the uh, traveling microscope which is used to see the fringe patterns formed because of the plano convex lens and the glass plate so the fringe pattern it looks like this the fringe pattern it looks like this uh, the central dark fringe is zero dark fringe then first second third like this you have to count the dark fringes some cases where the central fringe becomes bright in the experiment if it is a bright fringe then don't count it as 0 1 2 3 count it as 1 2 3 4 there are couple of reasons for getting the uh, bright fringe Uh, in that one of the main reason is at the point of contact if there is any transparent dust particle which add a additional phase of pi by 2 leading to change from uh, dark fringe to the bright fringe while doing the experiment you no need to worry and you no need to try to get the dark fringe if you get the bright fringe well and good but before uh, starting and focus uh, trying to get the rings pattern first you must be clear with uh, the cleaning uh, the cleanness of the glass plate and the lens both the surfaces of glass plate and lens should be wiped with a neat cloth or a paper and make sure that there is no fingerprint or the and or the dust particles even with the 45 degree inclined glass plate also there should not be any dust particles now i will take you to the exact apparatus what we use and i will show you how the rings will be formed and how to take the readings in that uh, here is the experiment setup uh, for the neutus rings uh, this one is the sodium vapor lamp and here you have a trolley uh, microscope which is used to focus and then here you have a inclined glass plate okay so the inclined glass plate setup so you can adjust the well uh, okay so the angle and you can get the fringe patterns and then you require a magnifying glass to see the readings first you need to keep the sodium vapor lamp and this microscope in a straight line in the same line then keep this inclined glass plate to the uh, just below the microscope adjust the angle of the glass plate angle of the glass plate so that uh, you require uh, you get some light here the light here and for better focusing you can take a small piece of paper like this with some ink mark and then try to focus this ink mark with the help of microscope once you focus to this ink mark then the microscope is exactly focused to the uh, position here in the below uh, where we replace this piece of paper with the glass plate and the lens set you can see the ink mark focused here just i focus there to the ink mark through this uh, that is the ink mark mark
okay after that you remove this piece of paper and replace this piece of paper with the glass plate and lens here you have one is the glass plate and the other one is the lens how to identify the glass plate and lens so just view through this if there is no variation then it is a glass plate when you view through this then you will see a small variation in the objects what you view then it is a lens since it is a plano convex lens one surface is uh, curved other surface is flattened so for that you can just keep the surface and you can rotate if it is not rotating then plane surface is at the bottom you just turn and rotate then if it is rotating it is the i mean the curved portion is at the bottom keep the curved portion in contact with the glass surface then you can see a small air gap in between these two then you if you see by naked eye you can able to see the rings pattern at the middle but it is very difficult to see directly by naked eye okay at the point of contact it will be seen but little difficult okay so these are this is what you are seeing here hence for better clarity of the rings we use microscope in this microscope you have a eyepiece here and you have a objective lens it is focused here this is this this is the rack and pinion screw to adjust the focusing and these are the two screws to move from in the horizontal and vertical directions okay so you need to focus this one little and you need to adjust this uh, inclined glass plate little to get the fringe pattern in the view in the view the fringe pattern it looks like this it has uh, bright and dark fringes okay uh, so if you see directly through the my uh, eyepiece then you will see the bright and dark fringes in that the central fringe is dark you will see some part of the fringe actually then you need to adjust the uh, screws by rotating this one by rotating this and this you must coincide the cross wires of the eyepiece exactly to the middle portion of the fringes you are seeing a vertical cross wire and horizontal cross wire and the fringe pattern in the middle right so these are the newton rings what you are seeing are the newton rings yeah these are the newton rings now you can coincide the cross sectional point with the rings with the help of rack and pinion screw you can coincide the cross sectional point with the rings and then you can move able to move the fringes to different fringes with the help of rack and pinion screw you can coincide the vertical cross wire as a tangent shield to the fringes okay now you got the fringe pattern like this and then the vertical cross wire and horizontal cross wires are along the diameter of the fringes once you move the screw of the uh, traveling microscope then this it will move like this the vertical cross wire will move with based on how you rotate so when it coincides tangentially with the first fringe then you can count it as one and continue to rotate and when it is coincided with this this is 1 2 3 4 fourth fringe then count it as four like this you go on continue till the 12th fringe 12th dark fringe when it is tangential to 12th dark fringe then you need to take the readings after that you come back by two fringes inside and take uh, 10th fringe reading and then uh, eighth next sixth next fourth and then second fringe reading in the left hand side after that you come back to the right hand side second fringe this is right hand side second fringe then right hand side of fourth fringe etc 
like this you go up to right hand side 12th fringe now i will explain how to take the readings so this uh, screw uh, traveling microscope is having the scales arrangement which is similar to the screw gauge in the case of screw gauge you will have a pitch scale and the head scale so first you must find out the least count of this instrument if you see closely here so there are uh, 10 divisions in any of the 10 millimeters of distance so that means value of one main scale division in this case value of one main scale division becomes 1 mm value of one main scale division is in mm it is 1 mm and if you see the head scale in the case of head scale you have 100 number of divisions are you able to see here 90 then 0 so 10 20 30 40 50 like this if i rotate then there are 90 after 90 100 total 100 divisions are there in the head scale so least count of this instrument you can find out by a simple formula least count equal to value of 1 mst uh, value of 1 pitch that is 1 mm divided by total divisions in the head scale that is 100 number of divisions so least count 1 mm by 100 that is 0 0.01 mm so you are expressing all the readings in mm now this particular position if i say it is for the 12th dark fringe in the left hand side then you should see the zero mark it is here now so it is between which two divisions if it is between say 53rd and 54th division then you will write the pitch scale reading as 53 okay the lower division you should take even though it is near to the higher division and then here corresponding to the zero marking here in this side which reading it is corresponding to that reading is your head scale reading when you read the head scale you must read it like this in this direction you should read okay it should come like this so in that way it is between uh, you should see vertically downward without any parallax okay so in that way if you see then it is 80 85 86 it is between 86 and 87 you can take it as 86 okay this is for the 12th dark fringe so here is the formula what i said pitch is equal to 1 mm least count equal to pitch by number of divisions in the head scale so least count you get it as 1 mm after this this is the table where you will record all the readings now the focus to first reading is lhs of 12th fringe for this psr it came out as uh, 53 and then hsr it came out as 86 then the uh, final tr value it becomes 53.86 because this is in uh, 0.01 mm 0.01 mm into uh, 86 it becomes 0.86 so 53.86 you get so you write it here as 53.86 same way you try to continue for other readings so what you can do for avoiding the zero correction factor in this traveling microscope which is having a pitch scale arrangement so you can take only the hsr value for the rest of the trials psr you take only for 12th uh, left side ring and for the uh, second right side ring okay only for these two you take the uh, psr value for rest of the things you just take the HSR in all the trials okay just by rotating this screw you will adjust all the time the vertical crossfire in the micro uh, in the eyepiece uh, tangential to the required fringe number as it is stated here and then you record the HSR values so after seeing the HSR values you need to do the calculations of TR so before that PSR value how to write for rest of the things I will tell you by taking one set of readings as an example yes here you have one set of readings while taking the readings students what they did they took 32 as the LHS value for the I mean uh, L light left side uh, 12th fringe reading 32 is the PSR value and then 15 is the HSR value after that they took only the HSR value next again for the second right fringe they took the PSR value as well as HSR value 
Next, they took only the PS, HSR value. After this, the PSR value for rest of the readings, it is written based on the trend in the HSR. Say HSR value if it is decreasing like from 97 to 79, 79 to 57, 57 to 35, 35 to 4, it is continuously decreasing. Then keep the same PSR. But for a particular trial where the HSR is changed from 15 to 97, that means it is increased. If it increases, then decrease that particular trial uh, PSR value one division less from the previous like 32 was here. Here 15 to 97 it is increased the HSR value therefore PSR they changed from 32 to 31. Next this one they took it freshly. Next from here if you see 55, 19 decreased so they kept the same. From 19 to 96 it is increased hence here you decrease it by one division and continue if the HSR value is decreasing. Like this you record both the PSR and HSR values and from there you calculate the total reading. Next the same set of total readings you rewrite them in this uh, new table. So in this new table you have 3 fringes uh, total readings here and another 3 fringes here like 12, 10, 8 this side, 6, 4, 2nd this side. And here you must write both the readings corresponds to left hand side and then the right hand side. Okay. So for the 12th fringe left hand side what is the TR value that is total reading value and the right hand side what is the TR value. The difference of these two will give you the diameter of that particular fringe. Say here you have a fringe pattern. No? So if I take the reading here and the, for the same fringe the reading here the difference of these two readings will give the diameter of that particular fringe. Same way here the difference of these two will give you the diameter of the 12th fringe. Similarly the diameter of 10th, diameter of 8th, next diameter of 6th, diameter of 4th, diameter of 2nd fringe you get it. After getting the diameters value square them and write it. This particular column where you square this 3.77 and write it as 14.21. Similarly, 14, uh, 3.42 square, 3.05 square and this side 2.61 square, then 2.16 uh, square, 1.49 square. Now you need to take the difference of these two squares. That is what it is there in the formula dm square minus dn square. So dm square is 14.21 here and dn square is 16.81 the difference of these two is 7.40 similarly the difference of these two is 7.03 similarly the difference of these two is 7.08 like this the d squares difference value you will get it as almost same for all the three cases because this 12 minus 6 is 6 10 minus 4 is 6 8 minus 2 is 6 in that way n minus uh, m minus n is 6 in this case therefore the difference in their uh, diameter square it comes out as almost the same you take the average of this that value you write it here as d squares difference it is in mm square millimeter square therefore 10 to the power of minus 6 you include along with it then it converts into millimeter square to meter square it is millimeter square it is plus it is okay then uh, you need to substitute the values of m minus n as 6, lambda as 5893, r is this formula you know. So in this dm square minus dn square mean value is 7.17 into 10 to the power of minus 6, 4 is the in the formula, 6 is m minus n that is 6, uh, 5893 into 10 to the power of minus 10 meters is the wavelength. If you simplify, you will get the radius of curvature of a given plano convex lens. So with the help of Newton's rings, precisely you can measure the radius of curvature of a given plano convex lens. Even though it looks like flat for observation, but with the help of this Newton's rings interference fringe pattern, you can exactly measure the radius of curvature of the given plano convex lens. So at the end, you need to write the uh, result that is the result of this experiment is the radius of curvature of a given plano, given plano convex lens is 0.506 meters. Okay, thank you.